Welcome back to AI Basics. Now that we have our data science environment installed, it's time to dig in and learn how to format a Jupyter Lab notebook. <music> Jupyter Lab is a GUI based toolkit for building and documenting data science projects. For our project, we'll use it to browse data files and document our machine learning experiments in a document called a notebook. Notebooks allow you to combine formatted text with executable code in the same document. They're widely used in data science for publishing results from research and for initial model building. They can also be easily shared with others, either in their executable form or as a dynamic HTML document. They typically are not used as the final executable code for a deployed AI model though. With that introduction, let's create our first notebook. We went over the basic steps for installing Anaconda in the previous video. By installing Anaconda, you have a self-contained client and server environment that contains JupyterLab, Python, and most of the Python libraries that we'll need for our AI projects. Once you have Anaconda installed, you'll want to launch Anaconda Navigator. In Windows and Mac OS, you'll find Navigator with your other applications inside of the Anaconda folder. On Linux, just open a terminal and execute anaconda-navigator. So this is the portal for all of the environments with which you can interact. We want to create a Jupyter Lab notebook. So let's go ahead and launch that. It'll open up in your default browser. You do need to keep Navigator running in the background though, because it's acting as the server for what is running in our browser. When JupyterLab opens, it opens the launcher page, and this just contains a number of applications that'll be useful to us. One is for creating a notebook, and then we have various consoles and terminals and text editors available to us. On the left, we have a basic file browser. So this will allow you to navigate anywhere on your system and load or save files to your folders. When we create a new notebook, it's going to store that notebook in the current directory, which happens to be the root right now. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new notebook. And notebooks are made up of cells. Cells contain either Python code or formatted text or plain text. And the cells just run vertically from top to bottom throughout your notebook. The current cell that you're editing will have a blue bar to the left of it. And you can see what type of cell that is by looking up here in the menu. So in this tutorial, we're going to primarily work with text. So I'm going to change this to a markdown cell. And this will allow me to add formatted text to the cell. The formatting of the cells is that of a wiki. If you're not familiar with wiki markdown, it's pretty straightforward and I'll show you as we go along. I want to use this first cell as the title of our project. And in this project, we'll be classifying breast cancer tumor data. So to create a nice large title, we start with a single hash symbol and a space, and then just the text that you want to follow. So the title of our project will be classification of breast cancer tumors. To execute a cell, whether that's a markdown cell or a cell that actually contains Python code, you press shift enter on your keyboard. And in our case, that executes all of the formatting that's within the cell. And you can see now that we have a nice large title. If you want to go back and edit that, you just double click on it and it brings you back to the edit mode. So I'll go ahead and add my name to this and then shift enter again. You'll notice I didn't have any tags in front of my name, so it's just using its default text. Let's do a real basic example of a code cell. You'll notice that our new cell is set up for code, and I'm gonna use the most basic example that I can think of. So don't worry too much about what the actual code is doing. I wanna just print out today's date. And so to do that, I'm going to need to import a Python module, and I'll do that by saying from date time, that's the name of the module import date. And then to print it out on our notebook, I'm just going to use the print command and inside of parens, I'm first going to print out a string, which will be in quotes. 
and I'll just say today is. Outside of the quote, I'll put a comma, and then I'll use that module I just imported, date.today with parens. So that will just grab the system date off of my PC and print it below. Shift Enter will execute it, and there's our printed string. We'll be spending a lot more time on the Python side. Again, we're going to focus most of our time in this tutorial with formatted text. All right, so we know about headings. Let me show you a nice reference so that you can see what some of the other tags are. If you go to the Help menu, you can choose Markdown Reference. It'll open in a new tab, and now you can see how to format a lot of your other text. So enclosing text in a single asterisk will make it italic, double asterisks will make it bold, and here are our different headings. So the, the more hashes you put in front of your text, the smaller the heading will be. Let's use a couple of these examples in our sample notebook. I'm going to start out with a slightly smaller heading. This will be like a section, and we'll make this the introduction. Let me just quickly type in some text here. Okay, so you may have noticed that I switched this to a markdown cell about halfway through my typing, and that's fine. I just don't want it to be a code cell. So I've got some information about our project. This is just a little bit of background for anyone who is reading our notebook. I'd like to highlight these two risk factors, sex and age, and let's put them in italics. So again, we do that by enclosing that in asterisks. And then I'd like these three attributes to be in a bulleted list. So again, you can refer back to that markdown reference. You just put a dash and a space in front of each item. Okay, and I think that's the formatting we need. Let's go ahead and execute that again with a shift enter. And things are looking good. We've got our italics here and our bulleted list. All right, I want to add one more thing to this, so I'll double click on it. And what I'd like to do is just put a graphic underneath that text. And I'm going to grab that graphic off of the breastcancer.org website. What I'll do here is just go into inspect mode. and grab some sources, and there's their logo. So I'll just right click and copy the image URL. So if you want an image, you start out with an exclamation mark and you enclose your alt text in brackets. So the alt text is what will pop up if you hover over the image. And I'll just call it logo. And then you put the URL in parens. Okay, so I'll paste that there. Just take a look at that. And there it's, so it's just bringing it right in off the website, loading it directly. And then let's do one more. Let's hyperlink this word statistically, and we'll also bring it back to the breast cancer org website. So we'll come back here, and I think it's under the understanding section, and we'll grab some statistics. Okay, this is the link I want, so I'll copy that. and I want to hyperlink it off of this word statistically. So it works the same way. I'll go back into edit mode. You enclose this in square brackets. So that's the word that will be hyperlinked, and then we put our actual URL in parens. Shift Enter. So there's our hyperlink. You can see down at the bottom left, it's going to take us off to that link, and we've got our image at the bottom. So there's some examples of formatting text. Really the best way to go about this is just looking at the markdown reference, trying out different things, and seeing if you can get text to be formatted in the way that you like it. Last thing I'll mention, you may have seen down at the bottom here that it was saving as I went, so your notebooks are going to get auto-saved so you don't have to worry about that. If you want to rename it, you can just right click on it and give it a new name and put it in a different folder if you want. That should get you started with notebooks. I encourage you to practice formatting text by making good use of the markdown reference in the help menu. 
In the description below, I've linked the Jupyter documentation and some additional information that might be helpful. In our next video, we'll begin to build a basic machine learning project and load our data set. Thanks again for watching. If you like where things are going, consider subscribing to the channel. It will put new videos in your feed and it helps the channel grow as well. See you in the next video.